Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist, here on YouTube, and today we are going to be talking about what to expect when you go in for a flute repair. I will hazard a guess that these tips should be able to help you even if you play a different instrument. The first thing is always to simply accept that accidents happen. It doesn't matter how professional you are, it doesn't matter how well you take care of your flute, accidents happen. If you're not the one who drops the flute, someone else might knock your flute over. You might be sitting at your chair properly, but maybe someone else will accidentally whack you with their instrument case, causing you to careen forward and knock your lip plate into your music stand. Things happen. I won't deny the fact that we all feel really bad when we hurt our instruments. I actually made a whole video about how I feel when I dent my flute. You cannot be a professional musician and not have had a horrible instrument related accident happen. It's a rite of passage. You can't go 20, 30, 40, 50 years driving a car without having had some sort of accident. You could have been parked in a completely legal, very spacious area and still get your front driver's side fender backed in by some person who just wasn't looking where they were going in like the biggest road ever. This might be from actual experience. I hope I've made my point clear. Accidents happen, and even if it is 100% your fault, accidents still happen. You can go ahead and let yourself be sad for like a day or two, but you gotta pick yourself up afterwards and just brush it off and tell yourself, well, that's another experience under my experience belt. Number two, before accidents happen, so this is like when you get your flute, you should already research reputable technicians in your area. This might mean that when you take your flute in for repairs or for maintenance, that you may have to actually ship your flute off. A lot of people do this, professionals included, just to be able to send their flute to a technician that they really trust. You can bet that there will be really good reputable technicians if you are in sort of like a big city. So like New York, Chicago, I'm in Seattle, Seattle has a really good one, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Vancouver. You may notice that I am only listing North American places because I am a very North American lady. Number three, you want to budget ahead of time for repairs. Accidents can never be predicted. It's always really important that you have a little bit of extra cash stowed away just to be able to pay for emergency repairs because you never know how big of a repair it needs to be. Sometimes it might be a very little thing and some technicians even do it for free. However, if you have like a rod bent, a key is bent, screws are missing, felts have fallen off, corks have fallen off, your pad is starting to rip off. That stuff can add up because you're not only paying for the parts, you're also paying for the labor. These people need to put bread on their table or if they're gluten-free, then rice. I would go as far as to over budget and if you don't need to use the extra cash, then you can roll it over to the next year. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. The maintenance on my flute costs $300 to $500 every year. It is like maintaining a car. I budget $500 a year for maintenance and repairs. The $300 is sort of my normal amount that I pay for a maintenance. $500 is if I haven't taken it in for a while and more things need to be replaced or refitted. I think most of you watching this video may not have a flute as expensive as mine. So if you do budget like $500, that's way enough money to cover any kind of accident that's gonna happen to your instrument. Last year when I did my maintenance, it was only like $270. So I was able to roll over like more than $200 to the next year to pay for my this year's very expensive maintenance because I took a year and a half to bring it back in. This year it cost me just over $500. It was very sad, but it was not the end of the world because I over budgeted from the year before. So between the two years, I paid an average of between $300 to $400 for maintenance. So in that way, it's a lot more manageable. Number four, when you do take your instrument to the repair person to the technician, you want to tell the truth. These repair people are like detectives. They can tell from the type of dent on your instrument 
what probably happened to it. There was one time I took in my flute to my Seattle technician and she immediately said, oh, that is a music stand dent. And I hadn't even noticed this dent. Don't try and hide the fact that an accident happened to your flute. They can tell. You might as well be completely upfront about what happened to it. You can tell them that you feel like an idiot, but it happened and please fix it. After hearing what happened to the flute, they might start also asking you like, what do you normally do with this flute? How do you perform? Where do you perform? A lot of times these technicians like to give kind of random tips on how to take care of your flute based on how you actually perform with it, based on how you actually practice with it. They may even suggest additions and different little customizations that you can put on your instrument that will make things more comfortable for you, or it just might help maintain the instrument longer for you. You will find that when you tell the truth, these these technicians will be very blunt with you about what you should have done instead. And that's a good thing. In my experience, repair people are some of the bluntest people on the face of the earth. They say what they mean, they mean what they say. Sometimes, you know, for us, we'll feel like, oh my gosh, they think that I don't take care of my flute. I don't want them to think low of me. Really? They're only telling you these things because they care about you. They care about your flute, they care about you, they care about how you're taking care of your flute. Usually the good ones are the bluntest people. Find a blunt one. Number five, you want to get an estimate of the time and the cost of fixing your flute. That way you'll know if you need to rent a flute in the meantime, if you don't have a backup flute. I know that some flute repair places have courtesy flutes, so it's like getting your car fixed and they give you a courtesy car, which I think is really nice, but it's not everywhere. Not everyone does it. You want to get them to kind of take a look at it in front of you and sort of give you like a rough estimate of what looks like happened to your flute. It won't be as big of a surprise when the bill comes to you. If your flute is still under warranty, you can also ask about that and see how that plays into how the costs work for you. Most of the time these repair people do really want to help you out. As it is in any industry, you do get a few lemons here and there. Yes, that that is true. That is unfortunate. Where there are people, there are some other people who may not be the most competent. However, most of them do really want to help you out. Number six is you do not want to rush the technician. Sometimes it just takes longer to order parts in. It's not like they can just take your flute, sit down and magically do so voodoo whatever magic on it and then suddenly it's better and you get it again in the same day. It doesn't work like that. They also have a schedule. It's not just first come first serve. They actually have to schedule in times to fix everyone's flute. So you are coming in basically after all those other people that they already scheduled during that like week or two weeks. So I would suggest that you call in ahead of time, especially if it's for a maintenance, at least like two months or so, just so you can get onto the top of that schedule. At least in North America, watch out for the busy times. The busy times include the beginning of August because the first half of August is basically devoted to the National Flute Association Convention. Every flute company will end up going there. A few weeks before, things are gonna be absolutely insane while they get all of their stock ready to go and show their flutes at the convention. At the convention, they obviously won't even be in their workshop. And after the convention happens, they have to deal with all of the orders that they got from the convention itself. Right after the convention happens and they're back home dealing with all the new orders, they're also dealing with another batch of orders that come in from new band students. This will include things like buying new flutes, buying used flutes, or they're doing repairs on instruments that need to be used when band begins. Things get really crazy, at least in North America, around the end of July, all the way until like mid-September. Things also start to go a little bit crazy in the repair world just like a month or so afterwards when all of those band instruments start to break. It's best if you can avoid this general crazy busy time, but if you can't, then I would say try and book it like two months in advance. The technician knows you're coming. They know that you're not going to rush them. They know that they can actually do a really good job on your flute before they give it back to you. A lot of times when you take your car in for a repair, yes, they will give you an estimate, but that estimate may not be exactly what they end up charging you because there may be extra problems that they find once they take your car apart and they can actually see on the inside. Same thing goes for the flutes. Whatever they find may add to the cost and the time 
time that it takes to fix the flute. Really, it's not anyone's fault that it may take longer for your flute to get fixed. So if you are caught out like a few weeks without your flute because they found new things that they need to fix, find your own backup flute, whether it's a flute that you owned from before or if you're just renting a random student model flute for a month and just don't bother the technician about it. That is not their problem. Like you finding your own backup instrument should not be their problem. And lastly, number seven, please clarify the type of payment that they want. Some places will accept credit card. Some places only accept check, especially if they require a check. You want to clarify who you are writing the check to. It may not necessarily be to their personal name that you write the check to. You may end up having to write the check to the name of their company. If you do this, it makes their life much more easy. I have heard stories where they could not cash checks because it was written to the wrong name. It means that they're not getting paid on time, which really sucks. Please don't do that. Some people might disagree with me on this, but personally, I don't like to bargain with my repair technician. One, because I know them to be some of the bluntest people alive and they will just charge things at face value. There's no point really for me to bargain it lower. I know for me, I will not lower the price of my lessons. Like I won't, it's, it's not a thing that I will do. So how can I expect them to lower the price of their labor? I get paid the amount that I state, they get paid the amount that they state. I have found that if you consistently have really good credit with them, paying them the amount that they state in full, over time you will develop like a good working relationship with them and they might actually start helping you out for free sometimes. Sometimes they'll do a little tweak on your instrument. They'll be like, oh, whatever, you know, like, we'll just do it for free this time. Don't worry about it. You get some perks along the way if you build up really good credit with them because they trust you as a customer. They know that you as a customer won't rip them off. You as a customer know that they won't rip you off. There's a mutual trust going on there. And there we have it. Those are my tips on what to expect when you do take your flute in for repair. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other tips regarding taking your instrument in for repair, please put it in the comments below. I would love to read them and I'm sure everyone else would love to read them as well. And as usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you wanna catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there, but otherwise I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Shout out to all of you who keep commenting, I don't play the flute. What am I doing here?